This video will show you how to simulate the AND, OR, and NOT gates using Multisim. If you've never used Multisim before, it's a software simulation tool. Using Multisim, we can build a circuit and simulate how it's supposed to behave. Then, once we build the circuit using a breadboard, we can compare our results for Multisim to our breadboard results. Multisim is a great tool that helps you know if you built your circuit correctly. If you don't already have Multisim open, please pause this video and open the software. Go to the Start menu on your computer and search for Multisim, M-U-L-T-I-S-I-M. -I -I it should be version 14. Once you have that open, follow along in this video to see how we can simulate how the AND, OR, and NOT gates will work. To begin, we're going to simulate the NOT gate. <clears throat> to simulate the NOT gate, you're going to begin by going to the word place and then component. Within this window here, we can search for any component that we want in order to build a circuit. In this case, I'm going to search for the NOT gate. All three gates that you're learning about will be found within the TTL group. So when this window pops up, you're going to want to change the group to TTL. Then we're going to search for the component that we need. The NOT gate has a part number of 7404. So in this window, you're going to type in 7404, and there's the symbol showing us what component we're going to add. And there's the inverter. To add the inverter, you're going to double click this blue line or click the word OK. Once you do that, you'll see a box pop up here. Anytime you see this box, begin with the letter A. So you're going to click the letter A. And now notice that the inverter is attached to your mouse. You decide where you want to place the inverter, and once you get that inverter where you want it, click your mouse one time to attach the inverter to your schematic diagram. You'll see that this window pops up. This is basically asking you if you want to add another inverter. If you wanted to add another inverter, you'd go to the U1 and select B. We've already got A. So the next one you would select is B, if you wanted another inverter. For this example, we only need one inverter, so I'm going to hit Cancel. Now that we have the inverter, we're going to add a few other things in order to test the inverter. So I'm going to begin by going to the group, change the group to Sources. Within the Sources, we're going to grab a voltage source. Remember that, um, we simulate or we can test any logic gate by supplying zeros and ones to the inputs. And in the real world, a zero stands for zero volts and a one stands for five volts. So we are going to set this up so that we can test the inverter with a zero or a one, which usually means to, to test it with a five volt input or a zero volt input. VCC is going to be our five volt input. So you're going to place that here. If this box pops up, just hit OK. Next, I need to simulate a zero. The VCC is my five volts, and I also need to simulate a zero. To do that, I'm going to add a digital ground, DGND. Add that to your schematic. The next thing I'm going to add is a switch. To find the switches, go to the drop down menu and go to basic. Go down to the word switch, and then look for the label SPDT. SPDT. This is the type of switch we're going to use in our circuit. Add that to your circuit right here. The other thing that we're going to need is a probe. A probe is basically like a digital LED or a light. The light will come on if there is a high, and the light will stay off if there is a low. So we're going to find a probe by changing the group to indicators. And within indicators, you're going to select probe. And let's just grab a blue probe for now. When you're done, hit close. Now we have all the pieces of our circuit, and we're going to connect them together. I'm going to connect the inverter to the probe. 
If you don't know how to do this already, you're simply going to bring the mouse to the connection point. In this case, I want to connect right here. Notice that the mouse changes symbols. Once you see the crosshairs, you're going to click your mouse and a wire will come out. And you're going to drag that wire to the probe. And once you get to the probe, you'll see a little red dot appear. Once you see that red dot, you're going to want to click again to connect the wire from the inverter to the probe. Notice the wire is now red, showing you that it's connected from the inverter to the probe. Next, we're going to connect the switch. But before we can do that, we need to reverse this switch. You're going to right click it and click flip horizontally so that it looks like this. And what we're going to do is connect the switch to the inverter. And then one pole of the switch will go to VCC, which means 5 volts, and one pole will go to ground. So basically, whatever the switch is connected to is what is going in to the inverter as an input. If the switch is connected to 5 volts, that means 5 volts is connected here. And that means that we're basically sending a 1 into the inverter, which means that we would expect a 0 to come out of the output and the light would be off. If the switch were connected to ground, and you could do that by clicking the switch, if the switch were connected to ground, we now know that 0 is going into the inverter, so we expect a 1 to come out, which would be a high, or 5 volts, which would turn the light on. Notice that it says key equals space right here. That means that you can hit the space bar in order to change the switch, as well as clicking it right here. When you're ready, hit play, which is located right here. This is what turns the simulation on. Right now, it's not simulating anything until you hit play. So hit play. So right now, I have my switch connected to 5 volts. That 5 volts is being inverted which means I'm getting a zero here and the light is off. If I connect the switch to ground, that means I have a zero at the input of the inverter, and that means I have a one coming out, which is a high and the light is on. So this shows that the, how the inverter would work if we were to build it and test it. Connect it to five volts, you get a zero out. Connect it to zero volts, you get a one out. That's basically what an inverter does. Hit stop whenever you're done. The next thing that we're going to do is simulate the AND gate. And in order to do this, we're going to start by finding that component for the AND gate. So you're going to go to Place Component, change the group to TTL. The part number for an AND gate is 7408. And there's a J and an N that pop up. You can select either one, but I'm going to select N. It doesn't matter which one you pick. So 7408 is the part number for an AND gate. When this box pops up, simply hit A and add your AND gate to your schematic. When you're done, hit Cancel. And next we're going to go grab VCC, ground, two switches, and a probe. Pretty much the same as before. To get VCC, go to Sources. And VCC will be in the Power Sources family right here. Also get a DGND, that stands for Digital Ground, and place it here. And since the AND gate has two inputs, we need two switches, one for each input. So go to the basic family, go to the switch group, and look for SPDT and grab two of those switches. And finally, we need an LED or another probe. So change the group to indicators, probe, and get a blue probe. Now we're going to connect this one all together. I'm going to start by connecting the end gate to the probe, the output of the end gate to the probe. And for each of my switches, I'm going to flip them horizontally so that my inputs connect to each input of the AND gate.
If you need to move things around so that you have more space, you can always do that. You can grab a group of things by holding and dragging your mouse, and you can move the whole group like that. So with these switches, I'm going to connect the top pole or the top section of each switch to VCC. And you can join them together just like that. And for the bottom, I'm going to connect those to ground. And you can connect them together just like this. Create a node just like that. So now switch two is currently connected to VCC, which is five volts. And switch three is also connected to VCC, which is five volts. Now notice that the key says space for both of these, which means if I hit the space bar, all of my switches change at once. Maybe we, we don't want that. We most likely are not going to want to change both switches at the same time. So you can do you can modify this by double clicking S2 and changing the key for toggle to something else, anything else that's listed here. I'm going to pick A. And I'm going to change the key for toggle for the, set, the third switch to B. Now I can control these independently. I can just change switch 2 by hitting the A on my keyboard. I can just change switch B, I mean switch 3 by hitting a B. When you're ready, hit play. Right now, switch 2 is connected to ground, that's a 0. And switch 3 is connected to ground, that's a 0. 0 and 0 going into an AND gate will give you a 0 out, no light is on. If I make switch 2 a high, now I have one zero going into the AND gate, which still gives me a light that's off. If I make switch two low and make switch B high, now I have zero and one going into the AND gate, light is still off. But when they are both high, the light comes on, which is what we expect based off of the truth table for an AND gate. When both inputs are high, the output is high. Next, we're going to finish our simulation by doing the same circuit but with an OR gate. So when you're ready, hit stop. The nice thing about Multisim is that you can copy and paste. So I want you to click the mouse and drag and copy this entire section. Hit Control C or right click and hit copy. And then right click and hit paste and you'll see the entire circuit come up and is attached to your mouse. Find an empty spot to place that circuit and click one time and you'll have a copy. Now, oh, I got an extra ground from the first circuit, I'm gonna delete that. Now, we're simply gonna replace the AND gate with an OR gate. Do that by double clicking and go down to the word replace. The OR gate has a part number of 7432. There's the OR gate. Click OK. And if the button, if the box comes up, click A. Now we have the OR gate with each input connected to a switch, and each switch has a connection to power and ground. So I'm first going to set both of the switches to below. And I'm going to hit play so that I can see how the OR gate works. When both inputs are low, 0 and 0, the output is low, no light on. If I make the first input high, I get a light. If I make the first input low and the second input high, I also get a light on. So basically I can see that as long as either one of these inputs is high, the output is also high. And then if I make them both high, the output stays high. This mimics the truth table that you've already seen for the OR gate. And this is how we simulate the OR gate in Multisim. When you're done, click Stop. Now that we've simulated the NOT gate, the AND gate, and the OR gate in Multisim, the next thing that we're going to do is build a circuit to test each one of these on the breadboard.